up here in the top right from Team Penguin Gaming, we have Pandora, very strong player, up against Zervas from My Insanity, very good player. Now, these guys did play a little bit earlier on in this tournament, but um, I think Pandora got handled pretty good there. This is a best of three, and I know that Zervas is, you know, kind of playing around, he's having a bit of fun with it, it's not a paid tournament, it's just to have a bit of fun. So we'll see if we get some creative strategies out here from either of these players. Mm, excuse me. With uh, the kind of style that Zervas has, it's very, I'm going to say, reactionary. From the stuff that I've seen, is he, particularly against Protoss, he's going to go out there, just really understand when the attacks are coming, and then build up a lot of units. As a lot of pro Zerg players will do, unless you've got an aggressive style, or that's what you intend to do with your matchup, what you're going to do is you're going to sit back, macro up like a beast, uh, make sure that you're ready for any type of situation that occurs, and then just keep good vision. I mean, if you're a Zerg player and you're not going to be on the offense right away, you've just got to know when it's coming. And the Zerg player has the benefit. If they're left alone, I think the, the strongest race, if you leave them alone, you know, into the mid-game, they can get so far ahead. So it's usually you'll see the... Oh, is this... Uh, you're usually going to see the Protoss players or the Terran players look to go and put some damage in on the Zerg player specifically because of that. They're going to want to go out there and try to deny the third base, you know, put on some plus one attack pressure, something that's going to be able to allow them to expand, if not outright win, and then transition later into the game. We do have the pool first, which we've seen from Zervas throughout this matchup. And that's just only really important because if the pylon goes down, you get some Zerglings out. If you've got any type of you know cannon play going on, you can be able to deny that. Ooh, does sneak that hatch down. A little bit of a miss there from Pandora. Not a big deal, though. He's just going to go for Cybernetics Core Expand. Very standard. Nice little tight wall off on one side to try and deal with any Zerglings to get by. Probe's going to come in and see that no gas are taken right away, which would it'd be a pretty big tell if it was. We'll see what comes out of this here. Overlord heading over to his normal position. Probably see the Protoss player look at taking this Nexus pretty fast. There's nothing out on the map right now. Four Zerglings, the standard opening. Be able to check anywhere for weirdness. Probe is going to go and hide himself, I think, over in these little bushes there, which I don't know if it's the best place to hide, but it is hiding in a sense. Four Zerglings is the great number because you can take both watchtowers, leave one in front of the base and put one in front of the third. Kind of just discover everything that's going on. Mothership Core and Zealot should be able to defend this base, no problem. Would love to be able to grab that probe, but that's why you have that one Zealot out there. Sometimes you'll see people want to go try and snipe the Zealot, or cancel the Zealot if you are the Protoss player, just so we can get further ahead. He's starting a very early creep tumor, and that's just a bit of a difference between him and this game and some of the other ones. Seeing that it is this Nexus after the gateways, and not a Forge expand, means that he's got to be a little bit more prepared for earlier pressure. Well, if you see that Nexus go down first, you've got way more time to throw down that other base, hit more injects, get out a ton of drones. But in this case, he's getting his speed really fast, getting the creep started, because you can go for just a three-gate pressure of some sort and get in a ton of damage. The Sun Overlord's trying to be in position to go out. Actually, he's got four gates coming down here, which the Overlord does see. Which I'm surprised this Mothership Core hasn't just come over here to help the Stalker shoot down this one Overlord. Overlord will sneak out. Mothership Core is coming over here now. Back on this side, Creep is moving. More Queens on the way, three more Queens. Really nice. And we already have units out on the map. Very aggressive pylon placement, but he knows this is coming. He's got Lur Zerglings already on the way. There's no plus one he's got to worry about. Speed. More than halfway done. Extra queens plus creep spread. I think he's going to be alright here. Zergling does see everything that's going on. Very aggressive pylon placement. Probably going to wait for his speed to be finished before he really wants to tangle off of creep. No panic here though. No spine crawlers going down. He's got so many lings. Queens available for the range. Snipe the mothership core. Focusing down the mothership core. 
great pickoff here. And I don't think the Zerg player can commit to this. I think he's actually going to have to back off. All these Zerglings out, all these extra Queens, he could lose this entire army here. Even Zealots, yes, they do good against Zerglings, but they don't have plus one. So I'm thinking he should be sending those home pretty quick here. Uh, I don't think he's going to have the time. And yeah, he's just going to go for the surround. Great positioning. He's going to clean everything up. Hunky Dory. And our Protoss player is going to lose everything, including his Ford Pylons. Might not see that one. Great hold, though. No problem in that. Up on this side here, next play for the Protoss player, it's tough. That was a very aggressive two base kind of play, designed to come in here really early. But that's just we see the difference in a pro player like Zervas, is that he saw that. He saw that this was a gateway first and Cybernetics Core expand. He knows the warp gate's done sooner, he saw the gateways go down. He's like, okay, he's going to go for a two base early pressure build. Extra queens, speed, tons of Zerglings, and that wasn't even close. So easy to pick off. Evo Chamber, Roach Warren, standard follow up here along with the lair. No panicking at all. He's up by not a ton of workers, up by 10. So the Protoss player is not out of this. There's no cannon here, so I mean, this isn't the most cost effective. One Zergling gets in, sees the forge, but that's it. And he knows that there's a Robo on the way. So knowing that this will likely be into Immortals. Uh, wouldn't surprise me to see him put down a Hydralis Den shortly after that layer finishes. Creep Spreads doing alright. Lots of Creep Tumors over here now. I like seeing when pro players kind of get into their stride. This is the comfortable spot as a, as a Zerg player. You're like, hey, look, he's not attacking me. I can do tons of Creep Movement. I'm going to macro up. I'm going to get my upgrades going. I'm gonna, he probably should be starting a fourth base here pretty soon, I would imagine. It's, you're just so comfortable right now. And that's why I like, as a Zerg player, if you can scout an attack and defeat it, or if you just play really, really smart and aggressive and put the Protoss player or Terran player behind, just take the whole map, play so casual. Wanted to get that one probe there, deny this Nexus as long as possible, but that's enough units that should be able to defend it. We have our Hydralis started, double Overseer, and that should just be a standard thing of just about how anybody plays. You know, with the uh, against a Protoss player or a Terran player, is when you get that layer done, get out some Overseers just in case they go for DTs. In case if it's against a Terran, you've got something like you know Banshees coming out. We do have a double Immortal push here with a Warp Prism. Lots of Hydras on the way. Plus one's going to finish up along with range here pretty quick. It was a fake expand, which I, credit to you know Pandora. The fake expand is a really good strategy. Unfortunately for him, I don't think that, you know, Zervis was really falling for it. Almost gets a lot of his army cut out of position here. So be very careful. There's a lot of sentries with a ton of energy. The problem is that, you know, they don't do a lot of damage. This creep spread is so far out. Not the best force fields here. Which is pretty good on those that next round of force fields. Kills off all the Zerglings. Keeps most of his sentries alive. And he does have some detection out here to clean up some creep. But I think he's just going to have to move home once again. Just too much army. He's going to start for the Colossus here pretty soon. But he does need to get that third base down. He can't ignore it any longer. Fourth base just finishing up now for the Zerg player. He's going to get that creep moving again. Lots of plus one Hydras with range. Getting the speed started. And I think he can move across the map and maybe put pressure on. But he's got to be very careful. Hydras are still very fragile. They get caught out in the wrong spot. Baits out some force fields there at the cost of some Zerglings and a couple Hydras. Infestation Pit, more Lings, plus two attack, Roach speed, and Hydra speed. Just getting everything he needs to under the sun to take you know the lead he wants into the mid and late game. Creep spread hasn't made it too much farther here though. I'm a little disappointed by the creep spread, particularly on the left. He's expanding to the right, so it's more important over here. But I would like to see the creep a little bit more aggressively pushed out as this is going on. I think you will be able to catch these creep tumors just in time. Zergling's going to come up here and see the timing of this third base. Bunch of roaches on the way. 
hive started. And we've got our speeds about to finish up here soon. Double Oracle, but this is a hallucination. Should be able to recognize that pretty fast. 16 roaches on the way. He's maxed himself out. Roach speed finishing up pretty quick as well. And this is in a lot of trouble from Pandora. I mean, he's down half the supply. His upgrades are what? 0 1. Going to be 1 1 for the next fight, as they're probably going to be 2 0 for our Zerg player who's maxed out. Got this base started down here. This is where you want to have a pylon up here as a Protoss player just to run some Zealots in or something. One Colossus is done. Thermal range. Thermal range. Thermal lance for the range is not done. He needs a great time warp here and some force fields. He always misses his force fields. Oh, sweet Christ. <laughs> just GG's out. I'm sorry, missing those force fields was too, too bad. Alright, so game one is going to go to Zervas. Pretty convincingly once again, but it was still a great...